While Hollywood elites were showing off their outfits at the Met Gala, anti-Israel protesters were right outside setting off flares and vandalizing the streets of New York City as part of their day of rage. Day of rage. Tommy Lahren is an OutKick host and she joins us now. Tommy, uh, quite the Democrat on Democrat contrast here. What do you think of this? Well, I'll tell you this, it's a tale as old as time, Carly, because while this was happening very close to the Met Gala, you wouldn't have known it from seeing the pictures and for seeing the festivities and the swanky events that surround the Met Gala. So this just goes to show that the liberal elites who claim to be about the cause, right, a number of them have posted on social media in solidarity with Palestine and things of that nature, but they were not going to let these pro-terrorists ruin their fancy event. Oh, no, no, that's for the little people people. That's for the college kids. That's for the police officers to deal with. These celebrities, these elites are going to be guarded with their jewels. They're going to be walking down a carpet, getting their photos taken. It's just the little people that have to deal with the disturbances. It's just the college kids who have to have their ceremonies and their special day ruined or canceled. But these celebrities, if they really wanted to make a stand, maybe they should have canceled their event in solidarity. But alas, they will never do such a thing because they care more about themselves than they do any cause that they purport to stand with. And as further evidence of that, just look at all of COVID when we saw the French Laundry, when we saw this mayor and that mayor partying it up while the rest of mm, us great suffered. Point. Um, Jen Psaki praising her former boss, President Biden, after he refused to do a New York Times interview and had some interesting ideas about who he should talk to instead. Watch. If you're in the White House, you're not thinking about, am I checking the box on doing mm -hmm. the most interviews? You're thinking about, am I doing the most I can to communicate my message to the American people? That's who I represent. Mm, um, yeah. So I would say more Howard Stern, come on The View, um, <laughs> you know, more smartless conversations where you're having conversations about policy, but they're, they're real ones that people have at their kitchen. Uh, Tommy, what do you think about that? Isn't that just a modified basement strategy from 2020? Yeah, and other Biden surrogates are also touting that Biden will be doing smaller events and shorter speeches because it's about the quality, not the quantity. He has to take the short steps. He has to do the short speeches. He can only go on programs that are overtly friendly to him. But you know what? I don't think the strategy is going to work because essentially what Jen Psaki is saying here is talk to the audience that already agrees with you. Go on The View and talk to the viewers of The View that are probably going to vote Democrat if they're willing to watch The View. I would imagine they're going to vote for Biden because, you know, the good judgment is not something that follows them. But I think it's a horrible strategy for Joe Biden. If you want to get independence, if you want to get some maybe some never Trump Republicans going on these podcasts or going on these ultra liberal shows, that's not going to help you, buddy. But hey, listen, if that's your strategy, keep it short and sweet and only talk to people that are nice to you. I guess see how that works out for you in November. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is willing to talk to anybody at any time, even between courthouse events. Yeah. So we'll see who prevails at the end of the day. Yeah, the campaign is focusing on quality over quantity, but some would argue that you aren't getting either quality or quantity. That could be a bit of a problem. Tommy, thank you so much.